So I just showed you how to run diagnostic tests using the software, especially if you have the classic software like I have running on this instrument. This is Agilent ChemStation B.0403. Um, it's a very popular uh, version of the software, even though it came out about 10 years ago. Now, the latest versions of software, the OpenLab versions, unfortunately do not include the diagnostic section, but you can now download a free piece of software to do all the diagnostics uh, yourself. Uh, so to use that software, first thing, it's called Agile Lab Advisor. You get it for free from the Agile website, but you first have to close out of ChemStation. Uh, and the reason is you can't have two devices controlling the instrument at the same time. Uh, we're gonna leave the pump on uh, and the uh, detector on, and that's gonna allow us to run these detector tests. So I'm gonna open up the Agilent Lab Advisor. And again, this is a free download and it can control and uh, run diagnostic uh, tests on any of the Agilent LC systems, the 1100s, 1200s, 1260s, infinities, and uh, and, and so forth. So first thing we gotta do is tell it to connect. So I'll have it, uh, it's looking for the IP address of the instrument and once it connects, it is now, it will then be in control uh, of the instrument. So it's uh, found the instrument, it's in control. So now we're gonna go over to service and diagnostics. Uh, by the way, this is a great place to do things like the, your firmware updates can all be done uh, from the software. So now we're uh, looking at servicing diagnostics. I'm in the data array screen, and here we have all the tests that we saw before. So we're gonna run the intensity test, just like we just ran. I'm gonna run it. In this case, uh, I'm gonna run it twice, just like we did before. I'm gonna leave the flow cell in place. It's telling me to remove it, but I'm just gonna say, uh, okay, it doesn't know I didn't take it out. And this way, I'm gonna set this up the same way we did last time. We'll be able to check to see how good our lamp is and how clean our flow cell is. So the first one is with the flow cell in, and notice we failed in the low intensity, the 190 to 220. Uh, we've only gotten 100 counts. We're supposed to have at least 2,000 counts. Now the regular UV, just like before, 220 to 350, that looks great. 11,000 um, uh, counts, even though I'm only, only required to have 5,000, I've got more than enough. So now we're gonna rerun the test, but just like I did before, I'm gonna remove the detector cell and when I remove the cell, we're going to rerun the test. And uh, flow cell, remove from the light path, say okay. So now it's gonna run the test again with the flow cell taken out. So think about what's happening. It's gonna measure how many photons hit the photomultiplier tube uh, with the flow cell in place and then with the flow cell out of place. So in this case, I could see that in the low UV, the 190 to 220, remember I had less than 100 counts before? Well, now I'm up to 10,681 counts. So I've got plenty of sensitivity, plenty of uh, lamp energy left. Uh, that lamp, even though it's past its uh, prime time, it has plenty of energy, plenty of sensitivity left in it. And I proved that just by running the quick lamp intensity test. So. Uh, there's a whole host of tests that are available in here for you. You just take a quick look at the diode array. You have all kinds of uh, tests that you could run. Um, with, with each component, they have their own tests. Even the column thermostat has a test. It heats and cools and, and it knows how long it should take it to heat and cool. Um, we could do some diagnostic tests with the auto sampler as well. Uh, the neat thing about the auto sampler is we can do some specific tests on uh, how is our uh, the pressure in terms of the main pass versus the bypass. And then the pump usually has quite a few tests that we could run, um, things like the pressure tests. Uh, and that what it essentially does is pressurize the pump head and then shuts off the pump to see if the pressure maintains. So that's a quick introduction to some diagnostic tools that are available for free uh, if you download them from the website. If you want to learn more about this kind of stuff, please um, check out the comment section and uh, give me some uh, feedback. Let me know what other kinds of diagnostic tools you'd like to see or what other kind of maintenance you'd like to see. And if you like this series of videos, uh, go ahead and click the like button down there and uh, let us know you liked it. Uh, I love doing them. I hope you guys like uh, viewing them.